Hello again. Um, I wanted to do another video here <clears throat> because I was uh, I was watching the old booktube and I watched a video that um, Bookish did that was a response to. Oh man, this is where I should like know my stuff before I start. It was a response to Michael's video. Hmm. I'll tell you what, I will have links in the description below for this stuff. But one of the things that came up was um, the fact that um, as of, I think, 2021, um, only, okay, I'm going to paraphrase, like 25% of Americans have read or started to read a book in the last year. And then the next thing that came up was um, people thinking that the books we were forced to read in public school um, have turned people away from the art of reading um, and the pleasures of digging into a good book. Now, <clears throat> I'm trying to think of where to start with this. Um, Bookish's video is really well done, and um, facts are a plenty in that video. So um, make sure you check that out. But um, one of the things that I wanted to say about that is that there are quite a few books that um, we were forced to read in um, school that um, actually boosted um, not only my love of reading, but my love of storytelling. <clears throat> and <clears throat> uh, I need a drink. Um, so just to throw some stuff out like that, um, I remember, and I think I've shared this before, but I remember in fifth grade, I think, um, we had to read Across Five Aprils. And I haven't read it since, and I keep saying I'm going to go back and read it and see what I think about it. Man, my hair is doing stuff today. Um, but I haven't gone back to read it. But it's like we were learning about the Civil War and stuff like that. And the book is about um, the Civil War. And I just remember thinking when I was reading it, I was just so shocked that in a book all these things can happen. And um, it was just like for years, like fifth, sixth, and probably seventh grade, like if anyone were to say, oh, what's your favorite book? Oh, Across Five Aprils. Yes, of course, Across Five Aprils. Um, I really, really dug it a lot. And um, that got me just into not necessarily wanting to read more, but it got me into the idea that um, books like novels were interesting. Because I have always read like little picture books as a very small kid, comic books. And then um, as I was getting older, um, reading like uh, Shel Silverstein and Dr. Seuss and um, moving into like seeing the stuff my dad was reading, which was like, um, <clears throat> like Stephen King and Clive Barker and Dean Koontz. And um, he was really into Lovecraft and Robert E. Howard stuff like that so that's kind of how all that went but um it was really my education in public school that showed me certain things and I remember in junior high um I can't remember if it was seventh or eighth grade but um we were doing a lot of Edgar Allan Poe and the Raven and um, the Telltale Heart and all this stuff. And I was just like, this is freaking epic. And so um, <clears throat> that was a real big, um, that had a huge influence on me for real. 
And I think what helped matters was that I don't know the exact date, but I think this might have helped. But um, the Simpsons started um, on Sunday nights after it was ripped out of the Tracy Ullman show and um, given its own show. I think when I was in sixth grade is when that like popped and landed. And I want to say that the first Treehouse of Horrors episode um, was the one with the raven, with Bart as the raven and Homer as um, the Poe analog or whatever. And I want to say also that that really helped my um, English teacher because everyone watched the simpsons everyone so when that happened it was like oh i could teach this because all these kids will already know it and be interested in it and i really think that all of this coincided and my dates might be off and i might be remembering it through rose tinted glasses but it seems like that really helped out a lot now i'm not saying that the reason why I read or that most Americans my age read is because they watch The Simpsons. But I'm saying <clears throat> little things like that help. So, for instance, when the new... The new... It's probably been out for like 10 fucking years and I'm just like, the new. But when the new Gatsby movie came out, um, I'm sure that helped a lot of English teachers get people into reading The Great Gatsby. Um so whenever Hollywood does some movie of um, a classic book, um, it makes it way more accessible for kids to get into it. <clears throat> and I was trying to remember if there was anything like that um, when I was in high school. And I remember that there were some I want to say there was like a Steinbeck movie that came out when I was in high school that really because I had this one teacher that was just shoving Steinbeck down our throats it was like which is fine but it was like um, Of Mice and Men, Grapes of Wrath um, and we just kept going down this like laundry list of his stuff um, so that was kind of weird but um but anyway, so back to my original point here. That really helped out a lot. And um, I also wonder, and this is something that I've talked about on this channel before too, I wonder if not having YA books helped um, or not. Because like when, when I was in school, like you went from the books in the Scholastic catalog to reading Stephen King. It was like that was the natural progression. And with YA, um, I feel like people went from the books they read in school to Harry Potter to other YA stuff. And you go in different directions and Twilight and the whole thing. <clears throat> and then I feel like... Um, a lot of people don't want to leave the YA world because the books are quick and punchy and easily digestible and talk about things that might actually be um, issues that they really care about at this moment. So I feel like there's a huge place for YA. Um, but that was just something that like I didn't have access to um, when I was a teenager or um, it just wasn't something that I knew about. So um, that was really, um, that's, a, that's a strange thing to think about. But um, I remember really loving The Great Gatsby, but where I was going at with um, storytelling was we had to read um, Canterbury Tales and... Um, by this guy who, the majority of my life, I thought his name was Chaucer, but it's Chaucer. <laughs> so there's no N in that. But um, 
I don't know why this book like made me so into storytelling. And I'm like, okay, wait. And this was like way before meta. So I was like, so you're telling me there's a book of a bunch of people like on a trip somewhere and they're just telling each other stories. So there's, so there's a book of stories about stories is what you're telling me. And I was just like, I was like, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard of in my life. How, how has this been kept secret from me for so long? And I remember, um, I can't remember whose tale it was. If it was the, I, I don't even remember now. But I remember there was this one bit that I liked so much that I read it over and over again a couple times. And then in doing so, fell behind in class. And um, I was like three tails behind everybody else. And then I got scared. And when I get scared, I just end up doing nothing. I just like kind of panic and freeze. So then um, like a week went by and I didn't do anything. And we were reading this book for like something like, I don't know, like a month and a half or something like that in class. And um, so like every good kid does, I went and got the cliff notes of Canterbury Tales and um, read the cliff notes. And... I thought the cliff notes of that book was the best book I've ever read. <laughs> and I just remember, and I still have it somewhere. I still have the copy of the cliff notes. And I was like writing like what I thought, like in the margins of it and all over. And last time I saw it, it was one of the times I moved recently. Um, it, it was just full of paper, like folded up pieces of notebook paper with like me, like, putting ideas and stuff down on it and then in one of the things there was like a map of this um, fantasy world I was building in high school and I'm like oh yeah I'm gonna write books about this someday um, but just everything about that book just like kind of opened wonder in my brain it was just like there were so many like, oh my gosh, this is like this and this is like this. Oh my gosh. So then after we were done with um, the assignments and everything and I cheated my way through a passing grade or whatever, um, I remember that summer because that was kind of like the end of the semester or the end of the school year. And so that summer I just read through the book again and thought it was like so funny fucking epic like I just loved it and um it's so weird because now I go back and read it and I'm like ooh, like this isn't nearly as like exciting as I remember it but um it was important enough at that time to like just kind of turn my brain on and like it was like a light bulb going off kind of thing and, like, I don't know, I'm sure I would be roughly the same place I am now, but that really was influential to me, um, just as a creator. Um, and I took a lot of, um, a lot of things that I've learned over the years. Like, I could, if I really went back, I could just go, oh yeah, that came from there. But, um... After I read that, that's when um, I started reading books outside of school. And um, I think Lord of the Rings was the first. Did I read that before The Hobbit? I can't remember now. I think I did. Actually, I think I did read it before The Hobbit. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay, well, this thing's a banger. Look how big this is. This will take me forever. And it did take me a long time to read it, but... Um, yeah, at the time I just thought like, um, oh wow, you know, this book's so big, like who needs to have a library when you just have a book that's this effing huge and, um, I could just like read this and it'll take me my whole life and I'll never have to read another book again. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Um, but yeah. And then so, oh, and then. 1984 was another book that blew my mind. Couldn't believe it. Fahrenheit 451 blew 
up my mind. Um, Martian Chronicles to a certain extent as well. And then Slaughterhouse Five, um, Kurt Vonnegut, like that, um, that, like so that right there. So um, Vonnegut Slaughterhouse Five, um, Orwell nineteen eighty four, and we also did Animal Farm as well, um, and Bradbury's Fahrenheit four fifty one. Um, those books were so important to me in high school, and. I think, honestly, it depends on the teacher because, um, like, like I was saying, I had a teacher who was shoving Stein back down my throat and it's not that I hated it, but I didn't find the, the importance that my teacher did in it. Whereas, um, the teacher who had us reading, um, Orwell, um, Bradbury and Vonnegut had had just had me from like day one. I'm like, yes, yes, please give me more. Um, so I think it just depends on the teacher and what the teacher's kind of agenda is, you know, and like what they're into. Um, because I'm sure there were people who hated the fact they had to read 1984 and Fahrenheit 451 and Slaughterhouse Five. Um, Maybe it just means you need to read books with numbers in the title. Because that just occurred to me right this second. Um, and then there might be people who loved, like, getting into Steinbeck as much as they did. Um, but yeah, so, um, <clears throat> I don't know if this answered any questions that might have been raised or anything. But um, I'm just um, here to give props to the public school system. Um, oh, well, let me say this. As a parent, um, my kid barely had to read any of the same books I did. Um, I think the only book my kid read that I had to read in school was Island of the Blue Dolphin. Um, I'm pretty sure that's the only one where I was like, oh, yeah, I read that. Let's talk about it. Oh, wait, no. And um, Lord of the Flies. My kid read Lord of the Flies as well, which is also a lot of fun. I liked that book, too, when I was reading it. Um, but the other books um, my kid had to read were really, I thought, fucking awful. Like, they were um, newer books, not classics. So I could see where the teacher was like, oh, let's give these kids something a little more modern that they could sink their teeth into and blah, 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 blah. But, um, like, in talks I've had with my kid, like, my kid didn't actually, like, learn anything from those books. Like, they might have learned, um, like, hey, this is a metaphor. Look at that. But, like, life lessons and stuff like that. Um, like, I don't think my kid learned jack shit from the stuff. I wish I could remember some of the books they were having her read. They were just, like ludicrous i was like okay whatever <clears throat> but anyway since i don't know what i'm talking about i'm not giving good examples so i'm going to stop that but let me know down below what are some of um the, your favorite books you read um in high school and catcher in the rye was another one that i had to read in high school which shocked me as a parent looking back now but um in reading that book again as an adult um i don't like it as much but anyway, um, so what are some of the books you had to read? Which ones did you really like? Are there any that turned you on to reading? Were there any books that were shoved down your throat that you absolutely hated that are considered classics now? Um, there are some books that I've heard other people read in high school that they had to read in high school. And I was like, motherfucker, if I would have been forced to read that, I would have had so much fun. Don't know if that's true or not, but I would have enjoyed it. So, um, and if you have kids, what kind of bullshit are they having to read? Let me know down below. And um, go watch Michael's video and go watch Bookshare's video. There will be links in the description below. And until next time, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.